Can you show me a plot of the uh, more recent wind data there? Yeah, stand by one. Okay. And winds is all that we're worried about at KSC, and it'd be a headwind on 2 2, correct? 2 2 to 2 3, so it would be almost all headwind. Okay. The last six hours. And what we have here is just the last six hours. Yep. And it's. Yeah. Again, where I have the cursor on, on, with the bottom graph, the uh, the top is the peak and the bottom is the average. So we've had some some lulls, some peaks and lulls in here, but overall it's been fairly, I wouldn't say fairly consistent, but we just, we had one peak up here at about 25 knots about three hours ago, and then we had a lull. I mean, I'm already at 25 knots on my peaks, aren't I? At 25 knots on the, on the peak, and I would think you're probably going to see something kind of like this, where it's going to come back down again, but... You'll know, probably peak into around 20 knots. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I guess what I'm taking away on that one, Conus Weather, is that Edwards is already very breezy. You updated your forecast 14 peak 21, and there is uh, no fuzz on that one. It is a uh, it is a breezy day already. Yeah. It is a breezy day already, but uh, I, I would expect that inversion to increase a little bit, and, and that would be working in our favor. But not, I mean, not really decreasing the winds by that much. But it just again, it seems like that 224 is some, somewhat of, of an outlier right now. Um, this 238 opportunity versus 239 at Edwards, uh, winds-wise, you seeing a difference? I know on your forecast you have them grouped together. I have them grouped together, but uh, it, it, it's really hard to say, but I would say the overall trend would be, for, just as we go on in time, that the winds would pick up a couple of knots. Okay. It, it, it's really hard to, uh, to pinpoint just because, you know, we do have these peaks and lulls in the winds out there, but the overall trend would be just that the later that we go, the winds would be increasing a couple knots from the first opportunity to the second opportunity. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, take me back to KSC right now and how, uh, not right yet, yeah, for now, uh, not in the future, uh, and how we're doing at KSC with the rain showers and the ceilings, and when do we expect to get uh, some visible satellite imagery? Signal full there, sorry. Yeah, the sun's just coming up. And so yeah, it'll probably be about another 30 30 to 45 minutes before we start to get the visible shot. Uh, but we still have one shower that has redeveloped. And we, ha we had that one area that, that uh, didn't last very long. But uh, we have seen just one shower that has redeveloped with that. But whether what I'm hearing you say is that uh, Edwards is okay, a little breezy, 238, 239. Casey, however, we're thinking is probably going to be okay. You do still have a chance of showers in your forecast for uh, KSC 238. I assume you want to look at that a bit longer before you do anything with that. Is that accurate? Affirmative. Uh, once I start to get some uh, uh, visible satellite pictures in here, we can see if there's any more boundaries that's, that's in there that will be able to help us uh, kind of see if there's anything developing. Okay, maybe we'll get something out of the STA that will be helpful too. Affirmative. Okay, copy all. Thank you, Conus Weather. Um, let's see, Fido, given, uh, given the forecast there that it, KC's looking pretty good, uh, and we're going to know more when the sun comes up here shortly. It's not up already. It's pretty close. Um, let's focus this opportunity on uh, KSC 238, and uh, we'll, if we need to talk about the next one to Edwards 239, if we have to, we'll evaluate uh, tomorrow and how the crew's doing for that discussion. Copy that. But for 238, let's look at KSC. Okay. Flight Fido. Can you uh, have your folks look at a one, uh, sorry, 3-3 three, three straight in, see if that would flop the hack the other side and make me feel any better about any rain out over the water? I will do that. And also had a question on the 238 opportunity for Edwards. Do you want to have the convoy not move into position for 238 for uh, Edwards landing? on their 238 timeline? Um, I, does it hurt? It doesn't hurt to have them move in, I right? don't think it does. So if, if we end up on 239, they're there an hour and a half yeah. early. Yes. So let's go ahead and have them in place Copy ready that. to go. Okay.
Discovery Houston, you are go for fluid loading, and uh, we're just getting Fergie's uh, uh, final thoughts right now, but the uh, trend continues to improve at Kennedy Space Center, and the concern with the shower is within 30, although we're still watching it. They do appear to be moving off to the east, and they're now outside the 30-mile circle. That's great news, CJ. Thank you very much. DEXA, we are also looking at the uh, fog situation again to watch these factors very closely, and I'll provide you with further updates, but uh, we want you to continue to fluid load uh, per the protocol. Copy on, we're doing it. Uh, out to 30 miles, the uh, uh, cell that was right on that edge was uh, tops to 17,000, and uh, basically said that from that point uh, down to about a three mile point south of the field, which basically puts it on a 060 orientation from the field to the that cell. There was a, a, a cloud deck that basically built um, from about 3,000 feet up to that uh, cell that was, that was blow off. Um, that currently has been uh, moving uh, to the south. Uh, on his last run, that 3,000-foot uh, layer actually obscured the, uh, the pappies, but it, again, it was just a bad timing thing where it was um, between the, uh, or on the outer glide slope uh, between uh, the aircraft and the pappy itself. They just recently took a pass by it on the outer glide path, and, and that, in fact, has cleared, so it was just a, a bad timing thing. Um, did another run to, on, a, on his last run to 3-3, uh, he saw no issue uh, other than that one cloud. Uh, he basically went in at uh, 5,000 out at 3,200, and uh, and this is that line that we've been seeing moving south. So, so again, uh, not an issue. Uh, all the data from the run, uh, turbulence, surface winds, everything was light. Workload was uh, was negligible. So, uh, STA pilots happy with the conditions of the field. Okay. And uh, we'll continue to monitor that uh, line of clouds there to the south, running towards the east, see what it does for us. But uh, at this point, that's moving south, and the STA guys are seeing some good results out there. Okay, appreciate that. CONUS weather flight on the flight loop. Flight CONUS weather on flight loop. Sir, get a status from you on uh, current OBS and uh, what you're observing. Currently, we are, we have a go, for, a go observation, a few at 2,000. Few at 3,800. Few at 7,000. Visibility, 10 miles. Still reporting some shallow fog, uh, but 30 minutes ago they were reporting 8 miles, so we've gone from 8 to 10 miles. Good news. And winds 320 at 3, peak to 4 knots. And those showers that were within 30 have uh, dissipated, so that is a go observation, and I will be amending the forecast to remove the chance of showers within 30 miles. Okay. Uh, you will be or you are? I, I, I actually have. You have. Very good. So you are go observed and go forecast. Affirmative. Okay. That is uh, fantastic news, Thomas Weather. Thanks. Okay. Um, and the SDA is still continuing out there monitoring for us, so uh, right now we're go observe and go forecast. It's affirmative. Yeah, and he, you know, he would report those, uh, those, those clouds at the south end of the runway, but again, those will be moving to the south, so we're, we're looking really good with that. Fantastic. Uh, Fido, so we're looking for a 3-3 three, three set up here uh, right overhead, and uh, we're continuing to press towards that, but uh, things are looking real good, folks. I see us guidance at the top of 6-4, waiting uh, for the A-14 actions prior to TIG-15. Yes, sir. Let's see, folks, do you want to uh, get your go, no-go for the deorbit burn? I'm going to come around the room and get your go, no-go for the deorbit burn. Uh, GC? Go. Guidance? Go. Fido? Go. Prop? Go. GNC? Go. Max? Go. Eagle? Go. Ecom? Go. FAO? Go. ACO? Go. DPS? Go. Enco? Go. Surgeon? Go. PDRS? Go. PDRS. Booster. Good Go. me. You don't even look like a PDRS. PAO. Go. Capcom. Go flight. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I was clicking right along. I'm just a mouth. Uh Capcom, let's go ahead and give the crew the go for the door burn on KC two three eight.
Discovery Houston, you are go for the deorbit burn. Discovery copies, go for the deorbit burn. Two engines arm press, good config for the burn. Discovery Houston, good config for the burn. Getting over. Flight prop, we're burning. Two good engines. Copy. Good control. Copy. Good burn, no trim required. Copy, good burn. Good burn, Discovery. Copy, good burn. Okay, folks, over on 3 32, post burn. Prop any deltas, post burn reconfig. Negative flight. Go for command. Discovery Houston, comp check. Houston, we've got you loud and clear, help me. Got you loud and clear, Dex. Uh, Fergie is still reporting uh, the, w the little puffies I was telling you about over the 3-3N, and we're considering a re -des. I'll have words in just a second. Okay, Houston, uh, just to let you know, the sun's pretty bad on a one two zero heading. Okay, uh, good, good call, Dex. Thanks. Try to remind me, the commander has glare on the 15N. That's right, flight. In addition, we've got the max bank of 60 degrees, and we prefer to delay to the 180 due to the altitude error low we're going to see there. Oh, my luck. Guidance has like guidance. Uh, nav is looking real good, and the crew is going to take TAC in and GPS. Let's take them both, and we're going to stick. Discovery, take TAC in and GPS. Take tack hands, take GPS. Discovery, uh, we're going to stay on runway 33. Copy, Houston, thanks. Discovery, Houston, Energy, Ground Track, and NAV are go. Touching down 2,700 feet at 2.05. Copy all, Houston, thanks a lot. We are on energy approaching the hack. Copy. GNC advisories? No advisories, flight. We got a good repo. Good repo, Max. Nominal shoot deploy. Nominal shoot, copy. Discovery Houston, you are on energy approaching the hack. No changes to winds and weather. Go for nominal shoot deploy. All right, folks, here we go. Coming up on the hack. On at the 180. Copy. Discovery, on at the 180. On at the 180. Pilot is now flying. Thank you. Commander is back to flying. Copy. On at the 90. 90. Discovery, you are on at the 90. On at the 90. Houston Discovery, runway in sight. Roger. Nominal approach and land. Copy. For the room, on glide slope, on center line. On and on. Gears down and locked. Copy. Gear touchdown. Nose gear touchdown. Ground speed enabled. Copy. Looking for post landing deltas. Max? None. Eagle? None. Acom? None. GNC? None. Prop? None. GPS? None. Enco? None. Booster? None. No post landing deltas. Medium on 5 3. Wheel stop, Houston. 
Roger, wheel stop discovery, welcome home. Dex, congratulations to you and the crew on an outstanding mission. There are no immediate post-landing deltas. We'll meet you on page 5-3 of the entry checklist. Houston Discovery, thanks for those words, CJ. It was a great mission. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed working with you and all the teams in Mission Control. And we're glad that the International Space Station is stocked up again. Thanks a lot.